so your debt payoff in real estate the cool thing is that you can actually you can leverage um, other people's money usually it's the bank's money or some other lenders money uh, you can buy a house with zero percent down so you're leveraging a hundred percent you can leverage out with three percent you're leveraging out 97 percent three and a half 60 or 96 point five anyway then so on and so forth perfect well thanks for watching this video with us today we're going to talk about something that i think is very interesting it's how to get rich by moving and this is this is essentially the topic of the day how to get rich by moving question mark exclamation point question mark is it doable is this real is this clickbait how does it work we're going to go over all those different things um first things first though i want to talk about how money is made in real estate so you, you can say more some people i don't know why you would say less but there are a couple other ways that we're not going to get into too much but i want to talk about the main four ways you make money in real estate we're gonna start with appreciation. So appreciation is how much a house or a property is going up in value year over year, okay? So essentially, say a $300,000 home appreciates in value 4%, that means it's gone up by $12,000, okay? So that's how appreciation works, and ultimately that results in cash in your pocket if you own the home. It's very similar as to how stocks work. If I have a stock and it's a dollar per share, and then it goes up to a dollar and ten per share. I've made ten cents. So that's how it works in stocks, and then that's how it works in real estate. Number two, we're going to talk about cash flow. What cash flow is is your income generated by the property minus your expenses. And expenses can include a number of things. Some people calculate them differently. Mm, as a rule of thumb, you're looking at your mortgage is usually the biggest one, um, and then you can look at your different expenses that are associated with maintenance, your expenses that are associated with an HOA if there is one, uh, your expenses that are associated with your vacancy rate, I think it makes sense to put that money aside and to always put money aside so you have that saved up there. But essentially that's what you're, whatever you're charging for rent in, in rental properties for real estate, that's where you're, you're getting that from. And expenses, they can, anyway, they, they can vary a lot and we can do a whole video just on those expenses. We're not going to touch on those much more. But number three is your debt payoff. So your debt payoff in real estate, the cool thing is that you can actually, you can leverage um, other people's money. Usually it's the bank's money or some other lender's money. Uh, you can buy a house with 0% down. So you're leveraging 100%. You can leverage out with 3%. You're leveraging out 97%, 35 or 96.5. Anyway, then so on and so forth. So because you're leveraging other people's money, as time goes forward, there's a lot of 30 year amortization schedules is what they're called, is when you can pay off your house in 30 years. That's what I'd say is the most common. There's also 15 year amortization schedules. You can pay them off quicker. There's a lot of things that you can do there, but essentially the, the debt payoff is the difference in how much you owe at the end of the day. And then we'll go over some more examples and how that plays out. And the fourth one are your tax benefits. We're gonna have an accountant come in here next week and we'll go over all those different tax benefits, uh, benefits associated with real estate. Long story short, and what I mostly wanna talk about is on paper depreciation. So you can write off your the amount of interest that you're paying. So if you're paying, I don't know, if your mortgage is in the beginning especially, you're paying a lot more interest than what you're paying in principal. And then you also get to write off your on paper depreciation. So even though the house is going up in value, technically on paper, right, the, the house, because someone's living there, there's wear and tear, then you can sub deduct that from your taxes. So there's that. And then obviously the interest that we talked about. So those are two main things. And now that we know the four ways you make money in real estate, I'll do another video that goes much deeper into each of these. But I just want to create a base so we can talk about how getting rich by moving actually works. And for the rest of this, we're going to talk about an a story, an example, and just play it out that way. So say Tom is, is intelligent, right? And he goes in and he buys his first home, say, a 3% conventional loan. 
And let's say his home is worth 300000 So if he went in with $9,000, that's how much his initial investment was. So on the, that's $9,000 for a $300,000 purchase price, which is a little bit below average of what we have here in Utah County. Um, but we'll take and use that number. I think it's a fair number. And homes that are in that price range tend to be pretty good rentals as well. And that'll play out with how we're looking to do everything else. So this is house number one, right? That's how much he's putting in. 3% is his down payment. And that's his $9,000. And now let's go about how the numbers are gonna work on this one. So as we mentioned earlier, is this $300,000 is what we're gonna use as our base, right? That's the purchase price. That's the initial investment is the 9,000. And then we'll talk about the ROI on that, which is then ridiculous. But at this $300,000, the average appreciation, right? Which is way number one. Let's just say average is the 4% like we were talking about before. Nationwide average has been about 4% for the last 100 years. And I project it will be very close to the same for the next at least 50 years. And then as far as Utah's average, which if we're talking a little more locally, it's been closer to about 4.8, 4.9 for the last 100 years. So Utah, historically, we do better than the nation does. And then, so if we go into that, right, so 300,000 at 4%, then now we're looking at $12,000, 12K. And then cash flow, we're gonna put that as zero for now. Um, you're living in it and you're doing a lower down payment, just the 3%. So we're just gonna say you're at break even. You're not spending extra, but at the same time, you're not getting any extra. You're taking care of your expenses. So let's put that as zero um, for the first house. And we can play around with it and we can add it up to a thousand or whatever, but let's just put it as zero. And then your debt payoff on that house, it'll be around $6,000. In the beginning, your debt payoff is a little bit lower, right? It goes like this. And then with time, as those 30 years play out, then your debt payoff goes much higher and you're paying much more on principal than what you are on interest. But the way it plays out, because you are paying so much on interest, that becomes a tax write-off and this varies with your tax brackets and it can be a little difficult to calculate. But I mean, for the sake of easy numbers, let's go ahead and call that 2K a year. And it might be less than that and you, you're probably gonna be cash flowing more than zero. I just wanna create easy numbers. So right there, that's eight. 8 plus 12, that's 20K. 20K is what your return is on that one property in one year. So that becomes your $9,000, 9K, went up in value to 20K. Plus that 9K is obviously still there. But that's more than, that's more than a 200% return on your investment. Not bad if you, ask, if you ask me. And that's just off your first year. And that continues over time. So that's how it plays out on one property. Let's see what happens with time and Kevin's story. We're gonna keep the initial investment count right here. Initial investment. And then we're gonna put the net worth on this side. So initial investment for the first property, $9,000, right? And then the return, that, that's gonna keep going up with time. So let's do another property, right? We're gonna buy another house around $300, $300,000 next year. He buys this one, say he rents it out and is it break even, then we're just gonna keep that 20K is gonna keep rolling in. That's gonna continue because the appreciation is gonna continue. That's actually gonna go up more than 12,000 because it's compound appreciation, but we're gonna keep the number simple and just leave it at 12,000. Hope your cash flow is gonna go up with time as well. And your debt payoff is also gonna go up with time. Your tax write-offs, your depreciation, that one's gonna go up with time but your amount of interest that you can write off, that one's gonna go down with time. But anyway, let's just leave the numbers at 20K a year is how we're gonna let it play out. So 20K for property number one. 20K, property number one. Property number two, he goes in, does an FHA loan, let's, let's play it out that one, and say he's at 10,500. Again, 20K. And this will stay, that'll stay true, not 9,000K, just 9,000. Then that'll stay true with time, right? And that's just gonna keep rolling in year over year. Again, year number three, say he now, these next three, he does 5% down, right? Has a little bit more money, he's developed himself, has more passive income, whatever you wanna do, 
or you can do HELOCs, which are home equity line of credits on your other home to buy it. Anyway, there's a million different things in how that can be set up, but let's just say you continue just buying, right? So 5% down, let's just say we're gonna stick with the 300,000. So that's 15K, 15K, 15K. He's done this for five years, right? Moved once a year for five years. Just double down. The requirements are you have to live in your house at least one year um, before you can turn it into a rental. So he kept, he kept these five, and now they're, he's renting out the four and living in the other. This number is gonna stay the same, whether or not he does more down or less down, that's the power of leverage. I mean, your cash flow is gonna go up a little bit, as you as you put more money down but let's just keep the numbers simple because the principle stays the same so now this is this isn't a one-time deal right this is forever this is how much it's going to continue to go up with time so if you play it out this way that's twenty thousand year over year twenty thousand twenty thousand twenty thousand twenty thousand and if we want to do the actual return right this ends up being 45 Let's just do 55 and let's just say 65. So 65,000 was your initial investment. I mean, if you average it out, it's about for five years, five times that ends up being about 13,000 a year is what it averages out. But one way or another, I'm not, I don't want to get too caught up on the numbers. I, I get excited about that, but not everyone does. Let's keep the numbers exciting and the way people like them. Ends up being 100,000, but that's not 100,000 in once. Although that still be a really good return. That's more than 100% return there. This is 100,000 year over year is how that plays out. And then folks are like, what? That, that, now, that number now sounds ridiculous. And the issue is that everyone tells you, unfortunately your agent in most cases, there, there are some times to sell and there are some times to buy and there are some times to plan it out and do it better. But most times, I think it makes sense to hold on to your property and keep it as a rental. Unfortunately, a lot of agents are going to tell you, hey, every time you need to sell, avoid capital gains, uh, which again, we can get into that and why I think that's not a good debate on the agent side. Because what happens if they sell you the house, now you're paying a commission on the house and you're paying and then they're getting a commission to help you buy the house as well. So they're like, hey, I could teach people this. First off, some people just don't know. I don't want to blame all agents and say that they're doing this with any malice. Just a lot of people don't know about this. But some of them that do know just would prefer sell you out, sell you twice, essentially. So you pay, they get paid twice. I don't care whether I get paid once or twice or zero times. The important thing for me is that the consumer is having a good experience and that I feel like I'm doing my job. So going back to that, that's 100,000 year over year, right? You play that out for 10 years, and you are now a millionaire. Congratulations. But that's how you can get rich by moving. I said rich, I classified that as a million. If you started this, I'm not gonna get too caught up in the numbers except for, for one second, just because it's exciting to me. So please indulge. <laughs> so this $20,000, that's been happening for the last four years, right? So that's really 80,000, even though we're playing it out that. And this one, the last three years, 60,000. This one last two years, 40,000. This one just last one year at 20,000. This one's going into the future, let's count it at zero. So although 100,000 is what your net worth is gonna be going up year over year, and some years it'll be more than that, some years it'll be less, that's how appreciation works. Uh, the market sometimes climbs a little bit more than it does in other times, but this is just a general rule, buy and hold, time will take care of itself. But just with that, over the last five years, my initial investment of $65,000 has gone up, that's 80 plus 60 plus 40, that's 180 plus that, that's 200, has gone up to $200,000 in five years, right? Now on top of that, it's gonna start going up $100,000 year over year, which is the exciting thing to me. So my strategy is to get to a point where I'm happy with that, the monthly income that's being generated. Here it's a little over $8,000 is what your monthly income is. So if that's your goal, then I'd say instead of waiting 30 years for have these all paid off, just pay them off quicker. I mean, use your extra money that you have to pay off one, and then once one's paid off, then you can use that extra money that's being generated through rent to pay off another and another, and then have them roll into each other. So that's what I think the best plan is to make sure that you're, you're profiting, and then you're getting to your happy net worth status 
which if even if you don't do that and even if you don't pay them off quicker ends up being about a million dollars over 10 years so in this situation since we had 200 at year five another eight years puts it at 13 years to become a millionaire so if you do this strategy it really does play out you can ask a number of different investors people who have multiple properties and ask them how they made money in real estate and then they can go over some of this they might go over something different the bottom line is this i like sharing this because most people don't know this but if you want to buy an investment property in most situations you're looking at 20 to 25 percent down and on a three hundred thousand dollar property that's sixty thousand to what is that five percent to about seventy five thousand and that's more than you have to put to just to buy five of these so if you can talk to your spouse talk them into hey baby let's go ahead and let's live crazy cheap for the next five years and take whatever we need to to invest to get there then that's what i think ends up playing out best another factor that contributes to why a lot of people don't do this is because they don't like moving and they're comfortable you get to a comfortable space and you don't want to continue to grow as my sister always says she's like there's no comfort in the growth phase and there's very little growth in the comfort space so a little thing to keep in mind but hopefully this has helped one way or another to go over the numbers how to get rich by moving and see if it's a strategy that's worthwhile for you we're going to continue to provide different strategies we'll talk about different ways to to make your money work for you different ways on how real estate works and all those different little tidbits of knowledge that are out there so if you want if this video is valuable to you go ahead and leave some leave it down in the comments or send me a dm i'd love to hear your thoughts on it whether it's good bad honestly i just want to know your opinion and i'm happy to debate for good or for bad on any of these topics so thanks again and if you need to follow us it's right here below will be a link and yeah well that should, <laughs> that should wrap it up i don't do a lot of edits and so you get to see me for better or for worse this is essentially how it is there's you probably aren't seeing this but there's like lights right here and there's cameras and there's audio so i apologize if i've been a little nervous <laughs> but i appreciate you guys watching and thanks so much Bye bye